कुमार सामी नायक है बोम वाली बुलेटो का रेडियो फिजी टू में पुराना गाना लगे हमें बहुत अच्छा लगे रेडियो फिजी टू देश की in the news tonight, Fiji committed to USP, says Mbaini Marama. Fijians can't fly home from PNG. And no medicine shortage. From the studios of FBC Suva, Edwin Nunn. Bulawinaka, Fiji. The Fijian government is adamant that good governance concerns at the University of the South Pacific are for the benefit of students. While speaking in Parliament today, Prime Minister Vorang Mbani Marama stressed that mismanagement concerns regarding USP should be investigated independently. Jeshulal reports. For human rights and the rule of law. According to the Prime Minister, Fiji's commitment to education cannot be questioned. As the nation with the single greatest interest in the university, we have and we will always put a high value on USP's good governance. Ultimately, that is for the benefit of the students, the nation and the region. Bai Nimarama believes that FICAC should be called in to investigate allegations of mismanagement at USP because the university cannot be allowed to lose its integrity. The university, Mr. Speaker, is bigger than anyone individual. The sooner we will accept that, the sooner the institution can move forward on the path towards good governance in the service of the region's students. Fiji has to hasten practical ways to reach an amicable solution to the USP situation and a structured and agreed way forward rather than the current adversarial tendencies needs to be looked at. But in the meantime, given that we are now the forum chair, it would be a goodwill gesture to immediately uh, pay our contribution to USP. Baini Marama adds, while Fiji is holding back a grant payout until its concerns are addressed, the government is not compromising the education of students. Fiji provided $315 million to the university over the last decade and has pumped in millions of dollars for the Tertiary Scholarship and Loans Board. Jeshulal, FBC News. And during debate yesterday in Parliament, it was revealed that FICAC cannot be involved in investigating USP because it's a regional institution. There are concerns tonight about the welfare of Fijians in Papua New Guinea, where COVID-19 cases are rising dramatically. Permanent Secretary for Health Dr. James Fong says as a response, authorities here are introducing new protocols for Fijians on repatriation flights from PNG. Dipesh Kumar reports the first flight from Port Moresby is expected on April 9th. All travelers from Papua New Guinea, including Fiji citizens, have been stopped from coming into the country until heightened measures are in place. We have to make adjustments because, A, we know there is a huge amount of outbreak, and B, we unfortunately do not have a complete uh, picture because the number of testing is not really enough to tell us exactly what's happening. <laughs> There are unconfirmed reports of some Fijians having contacted COVID-19 in PNG. Authorities here say they are unable to assist at this stage. New control measures will kick in before any flight leaves PNG. It will be maintained through the flight until the aircraft lands in ND. On in-flight, we'll have to separate the uh, travelers from Papua New Guinea from the rest of the uh, travelers. When they, and there's other things like, you know, you can't serve food, you, the cabin crew, minimal interaction. When they get off, the low risk group will come out first before we, uh, the Papua New Guinean uh, travelers will come out. Minister for Health Dr. Ephraim Iwangai Nambete had Edia called on all Fijians in PNG to be ready to return home as soon as possible because of worries about the COVID-19 outbreak. The ministry continues to closely monitor the global and regional scene of the pandemic and regularly engages with experts in the country and abroad to ensure that we are well informed of the developments. With the first repatriation flight from PNG expected in about two weeks, border control agencies and COVID-19 containment teams will have to prepare and adopt to new protocols. As of tonight, however, Fijians in PNG are not allowed to return home until the health ministry confirms that we are ready to receive travellers from the neighbouring Pacific Islands. Dipesh Kumar, FBC News. 
There is no shortage of medicine in health facilities, says Minister for, uh, Minister for Health Dr. Ifiremi Wangainambete. During the end-of-week statement in Parliament, National Federation Party leader Professor Biman Prasad once again claimed basic medication is not available at hospitals and health centres. He claims that tablets for type 1 diabetes, medication for chemotherapy and penicillin benzathine are not available, Pranita Prakash reports. The NFP leader is claiming that Fijians are forced to pay for medicines that should be available for free. Three of us in the National Federation Party as members of parliament <clears throat> have been inundated with complaints about the lack of medications and basic care at hospitals. We've heard and seen for ourselves family members, relatives taking pillows, blankets, linen, bandages, plasters and other basic consumables, Mr. Speaker, that normally should be available at our hospitals at all times. However, Health Minister Dr. Ifraimi Wangai Nambete denies claims that there is shortage of medications. Chemotherapy the drug that you're talking about is Paclitaxel. Paclitaxel, listen, Paclitaxel has arrived this week. Listen, insulin, mixed type insulin is available in the hospital and also through, and it's free in the free medicine scheme. Listen, benzathil penicillin is available. The minister says hospital heads should contact the Fiji Pharmaceutical and Biomedical Services Centre if they do not have any medicine stock. He also highlighted the current stock availability is at 88%. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Health had to reposition its Fiji emergency medical assistance team after tropical cyclones Yasa and Ana did not follow the predicted path. Dr. Wangai Nambete says officials were pre-positioned as part of their readiness before the cyclones. However, changes had to be made. Kritika Kumar reports this team is responsible for helping to stop the spread of leptospirosis, typhoid, dengue and diarrhea. The ministry has been keeping a close watch on Fijians with mild symptoms of these diseases. From a clinical perspective, the clinicians in these disease, uh, divisions have, have advised all the health facility professionals to have a low index of suspicion. The Ministry of Health recorded 5,404 cases of leptospirosis, typhoid, dengue and diarrhea following tropical cyclones Yasa and Ana. 539 cases of leptospirosis were recorded with 13 deaths. Opposition MP Andiliti Angunim Baravi sought clarification on the measures put in place by the ministry. What action is being planned by the ministry to ensure that our rural nurses, our rural community nurses and Turangani Koro are being informed on what preventative measures the community should undertake? They are continuously going out into the community, providing awareness, helping with sanitation, in terms of building latrines, but we need to be able to ask the leadership within the settlements and the communities to take heed of the advice. Dr. Wangai Nambete says they have also been spraying the hotspot areas to stop the spread of LTDD. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. Up ahead, desperate Fijians resort to illegal fishing and no decision on cyclone grants. Radio Fiji 2, Desh ki dhadka. Welcome back. Interview detective Corporal Avinesh Dutt today agreed in court that Joshua Aziz Rahman was held in custody for more than 48 hours. Dutt was cross-examined about the caution interview he, co he conducted with Rahman, who is charged with one count of unlawful possession of illicit drugs. Lina Reese reports. Rahman was originally arrested after being noticed in the company of three persons of national interest who had substantial amounts of currency. The defense put to the witness that if Rahman was arrested on the 12th of February 2019, by the 15th, the 48-hour holding period had expired. Dot agreed that this was accurate. The defense says the caution interview also revealed that Rahman was interviewed numerous times between the 13th and 15th of February. Dot testified that he interviewed the accused on the 
14th of February and was aware of when the 48-hour detention period expired. The defense also showed that the caution interview on the 13th of February was conducted for only a few minutes before it was suspended and then continued on the 14th at 5.30 p.m., the very day the drug raid was conducted at around 10 p.m. that evening. That earlier testified that with a dog unit present during their raid, they found a parcel believed to contain 39.5 kilograms of cocaine worth more than $30 million. The multi-million dollar drug trial will continue in the Suva High Court on Monday. Lena Reese, FBC News. The impact of COVID-19 has forced some Fijians to resort to illegal fishing. This was found in a recent study conducted for the Mbua province, Dakondrove, Lomai Viti and Ra. Kore Tandulala reports job losses have resulted in the influx of individuals resorting to fishing for sustenance. The minister says many Fijians are going through hardships and were only issued warnings for their actions. That out of the 26 villages that were assessed, 38 admitted to having committed illegal fishing. Koroi Lavisau adds their inspection throughout last year also detected some infringements. The Ministry in Shore Fisheries Management Division conducted 1,140 inspections from January to December of 2020. The finding indicated that, that out of the 297 infringements documented the percentage of compliance rating was 74 percent. Can the minister inform parliament on how COVID-19 has impacted illegal, unreported and unregulated fishing in the Fiji waters? The stringent measures by the Ministry of Fisheries and relevant stakeholders has seen no case of illegal, unreported or unregulated fishing in our waters during the COVID-19 period. Our reports and assessment indicated that with the offshore sector, there has not been any illegal fishing activity recorded throughout the COVID period. The Ministry will continue its monitoring with the Australian and New Zealand partners to curb all illegal fishing. Kore Tandulala, FBC News. Any decision on rehabilitation or rebuilding grants for cyclone victims will need cabinet approval. National Disaster Management Minister Inia Seruiratu confirmed a report needs to be submitted to the National Disaster Emergency Council. He says any recommendation must have the green light from cabinet before it is adopted in the next budget. The National Disaster Emergency Council will evaluate the proposal and prepare a recommendation to cabinet including proposed funding and that is why Mr. Speaker sir we are yet to go through that process and despite the impacts of COVID-19 and the recent disasters Fijians have shown a high level of resilience and cooperation education minister Rosie Akbar emphasized this during holy celebrations at the ministry headquarters today Akbar says holy like other festivals is enjoyed by many Fijians irrespective of their ethnic or cultural background she says the unity is reflected during celebrations with colors and sharing of sweets. Celebrations like this allows us to sit back, think and reflect how do we become a better, better person the next day. So this holy, please think about why Hindus burn holika. Holika represented evil being. So they burnt it, let it go and the next day probably you wake up being a better person with positive thoughts. The ministry has allowed schools managed by Hindu faith-based organizations to close on Monday to observe Holi. And time now to join Whitney for tonight's business. Thanks Edwin. Coming up in business tonight, Murray 7's food vendors remain optimistic. And processors followed to establish biodiversity parks. Stay with us. Bula FM number two and seri. The owner of J Video and Accessories in Namboa has learned one thing since the pandemic, and that is to venture into other business. James Ram is amongst the vendors operating food stalls at the Fiji Beta Sapphire Mari Sevens. Apanisa Wangarandovu reports. From the comfort of his shop to now selling food out in the open, Ram says he took this challenge upon himself. The business is going up and down, so we have to, to look for other opportunities to 
create some money for the family. The Namboa businessman even spent time at home making snacks to sell at the ground. We made it from our home and now we put it here so that we can provide better service for these people who are here. These stall vendors are hopeful the weather will be on their side for the remainder of the tournament. Yesterday's heavy downpour in the capital affected their business to some extent. Yesterday we had a very bad weather, but today we are expecting good sales, so we can see a plenty of people coming in. As we can see the weather is good, so we are expecting a very good crowd for tomorrow. The vendors say they are closely following the sports calendar so they are not left out. Their aim now is to have a stall at the Coca-Cola Games. Apinison Grandovo, FBC News. Vinod Patel and company has launched their Build on Higher Purchase program to assist its customers. General Manager Nilesh Singh says the service is available across all their branches. He adds this will ease off the hassle customers go through for simple renovation of their homes. Singh says the initiative aims to help people in cyclone-affected areas. We think that this is the most opportune time for it because um, we see that uh, our, our, our customers have been affected either in the north or because of the cyclones and the ongoing you know, changes in the climate and the other calamities that come with it. So this, this brings in, and we all understand that uh, customers all over Fiji also have other priorities too. They have other obligations uh, that they have to meet. Sanifa from HFC Bank joins us now with the latest from the money market. Good evening. The Aussie and Kiwi dollars today rebounded from sharp losses earlier in the week. They are likely to remain supported because of their relative success in limiting the economic fallout caused by the coronavirus pandemic. Meanwhile, the US dollar traded near multi-month highs against most major currencies, supported by a wave of optimism due to improving US economic data, the rollout of coronavirus vaccines, and rising treasury yields. US jobless claims fell to a one-year low last week. Traders will look to data on American personal consumption due later tonight for further hints about the strength of the U.S. economy. Elsewhere, the outlook of the euro has soured due to renewed coronavirus lockdowns and the slow pace of vaccinations across the European Union. That's all from HFC Bank for this week. Vinaka. Here are the local exchange rates as set early this morning. The Fiji doll was on the rise, gaining on most of the currencies we cover, but showing minor declines against the US and Aussie dollars. On the commodities market, the price of oil dropped over a dollar to close near $59 per barrel. Gold was down $10 at $1,724 per ounce, and silver closed up at $25.17 per ounce. The land-owning units have been consulted on the planned establishment of biodiversity parks at 50 sites across the country. Environment Minister Dr. Mahendra Reddy says the officers have visited several communities, informing village heads about the program and its benefits. Kelly Vazala reports. The Sudalpa MPs questioned if proper processes were followed to create biodiversity parks. Were the land owning units consulted? And how can you access those reports? Of course, Mr. Speaker, so we just don't enter in someone's property and, um, uh, and, and start you know, developing there. Opposition MP Asiri Randrondo questioned how the natural environment will be preserved in these parks. Can you just uh, inform this house, the sort of arrangements? that you have with the uh, land owning units in terms of making sure that uh, the uh, biodiversity park in Kalokolebu is properly monitored. There are certain uh, requirements that the villagers need to play in terms of ensuring that you protect this, these trees as they grow, protect the site. Environment Minister Dr. Reddy adds the establishment of parks is to address the threat to our biodiversity. There are issues that are generated by us the farmers, the household sector, the commercial and industrial sector. The minister says there are places in parts of the country where we've lost the diversity in our natural resources, adding that this is evident in the flora and fauna area. Kelly Vadala, FBC News. And that's it from business tonight. We now join Tale with the latest in sports. Thanks, Sydney. Good evening ahead in sports. We have all the latest from Murray Sevens. 
and club competitions for badminton. This and more coming up. Hi, I'm Ini from Raki Raki. I love Gold FM, only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. But the Moravovo's Olympic dream is still very much alive. Ravovo, who has been out of the seventh circuit for years, made a return on a high at the Fiji Beta Mari Sevens today, representing a life after rugby barbarian side. Caroline Tavi with the details. And the next Getting back to Sevens Rugby has ignited the fire that Ravovo thought was lost. I'm glad to be given the opportunity to play alongside these young players. The switch from 15s to 7s, the level of competition has really improved and it has been tough for me to adapt to the new style of rugby. The Moira in Naviti Yasawa native says he wants to keep his Olympic dream alive and don the white jump again. I still want to represent Fiji again if given the chance. I will keep trying until the final selection for the national squad to the Olympics has been made, but time will tell. Head coach Gareth Baber says he is still keeping his options open for the final squad. This is this is the final 15 by any stretch, and uh, you know it's a, it's a group that has an opportunity to put a, a good foot forward. Ravovo and the LAR Barbarian side remain unbeaten in the Mari Sevens. They defeated Ratafilisa 15-7 and edged Borderline Blues 19-10. Carle Nitavi, FBC Sports. Getting exposed to top-level sevens rugby is what the super cool Vatu Koro side is gunning for. The Nalawa no Sori Ra side is the only second team from the village to have participated in the Maris tournament. It was an eye-opening experience for the team. We compete in various tournaments in the West and now competing in the Maris sevens, the players have seen and learnt a lot. The team rubbed shoulders with some of the best local sides today. We faced three sevens giants today. Unfortunately, we lost the first one, but managed to draw in the second and third match. The Nalawa Ra team has bigger dreams coming into the tournament. We faced a lot of new teams today and a number of us are around the age of 18 to 19 years. But we are thankful to be able to showcase our talent today. Hoping to be amongst the best, the team has its fingers crossed as they want to participate in the Mari Sevens in the years to come. A passion for Sevens rugby has brought the young D-Block RC USA team to the Mari Sevens despite little backing or support. The journey to the tournament was a challenging one as the players had to fork out from their own pockets to fund preparations. Getting a taste of elite local sevens rugby couldn't be any sweeter for the Oveambao base team. This is our first Maori sevens appearance and we are fortunate to have compete with some of the best in the sevens circuit. Their sacrifice has paid dividends. We faced a lot of challenges during camp. We had to finance ourselves and look to ways to support our team. But I'm thankful to the players for having the heart and the passion to pursue their dreams no matter what. Two losses and a win so far, the team has learned a lot from the tournament. We've learned so much from today and we hope to do better our weakness come tomorrow and hopefully reach our goal. Taking the positives from day one, the team hopes to add to its winning tally tomorrow. Rubbing shoulders with some of the best Sevens players in the 45th Fiji Beta Mari Sevens is a memorable experience for the Moala Vonokula team. Made up of players from Naroi village in Moala, they are here to learn from teams like the Fiji Shadow and Tabandamu. Karlin Tavi reports. These players had to sell their produce just to don the red jumper at ANZ Stadium for the first time. We had to raise uh, funds for our trip to Suva. The team who are all uh, Yangona farmers sold their harvest to pay for their fare. And we did some community work at the government quarters uh, around the village to earn extra cash. Despite losing against the Fiji Shadow team a 41-0 in the first pool match, the side was able to maintain their discipline throughout the entire 15 minutes. Team showcased their discipline and teamwork on the field. This is our first outing for the Mari Sevens. For Moala captain Savinavan Dele Loa, playing against one of his idols, Jerry Tuwai, has been an eye-opener for him. 
It was a dream come true for us to have played with Fiji. It has now motivated us to keep pushing for our dream to don the white jumper. This is part of Moala's three-year plan to take part in the Fiji Vita Mari Sevens before branching out to starting their local competition for the people of Moala. Carlini Tavi, FBC Sports. Kandavu is known for producing some of the prominent rugby players who've made headlines on the world stage. Setere Kitawake from Kavala is one of the players who featured in two World Cups from 1996. Karleni Tavi reports the Kavala rugby team players are aiming to follow Tawake's footsteps. Leaving his parents back in the village has been hard for Kavala speedster Penny Sokini. It is my dream to represent Fiji and make my parents proud. Sokini, who idolizes former national rep Setere Kitawake, hopes that one day he'll be as good as his fellow villager. For me, one area I think I will need to work on is my tackling, ironing out my passing and just the little things. The Kandavu Bay side is here to learn as much as they can before the elimination games tomorrow. So... Uh, we do not uh, want to underestimate any team. Uh, we see every team as a champion, but uh, defense is one of our main weakness. Kavala put up a strong performance today against Police Blue, but lost 17-5 in the first pool match. Carlini Tavi, FBC Sports. In the NRL, a desperate tackle by Fiji Bati forward William Mikikau denied Justin Olam a try in the last minutes of play, giving the Panthers a 12-10 win over the Storm last night. Here are the tries. Fiji football goalkeeper Aquila Matei Suva believes the national camp is a good bonding platform for the players. The national squad headed into their first camp of the season on Monday at the Fiji FA Academy ground in Bar. Matei Suva says the camp will give the players time to strengthen their unity before they take to the field. We have this camp going on for like one week. Um, uh, it's a good uh, thing too because most of us are uh, uh, working and uh, just to have a one week camp to come with the boys just to get together and just to com combine some of the combination and see what the game plan that has been laid out by the coaches. Uh, I believe yeah, it's a good thing. Badminton Fiji plans to have its first national club competition. Tournament Vice President Andrew Whiteside says there are currently three active clubs. She says numbers are bound to change with increased interest shown by players outside the urban areas. Well, from that we're expecting to have a lot more competitions between players but also encouraging um, players from other parts of the country other than from the urban centers. So we're looking forward to that. The Murray Sevens has seen some great action today and our play of the day features a try from, to, uh, from this morning's game between LAR Barbarians and Ratu Felice. Manuel Imesamo's try in this game is our pick. LAR, here's my Samoa. Oh, good break by my Samoa. Oh, still going. Rato Felice. Oh, he's gone. What a try. Rato Felice. They'll watch the replay and they'll kick themselves. They should have got him. But Manu, my Samoa. Puts the barbarians in the lead now. Look at him go. They tried to get him. He managed to. Uh, it was like he was in a triple jump, skip, and hurdle. And uh, the fan working. And he kept his balance. That was important. That's it from Sports Tonight in New Media. Take a look at some of the top features of One Plus Nine Pro. This and more coming up. Hello here, Tawa. We love Today FM. Today FM rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM. And time for Weather Now with Angie. Hello to you and welcome to Weather World. What a beautiful Friday. The weather was settled. Things were pretty much dry the whole day. Hope to get more Fridays like these. 
The conditions will change for the night at few places. Where exactly? We'll find out. For now, let's quickly hop on to the Western Division. The weather was nice and bright, too good for an outdoor event or probably to do the things you absolutely adore. Eastwards from Pekhavarusuva, sunny spells turning into gloomy conditions. There is showers expected for the night. Low-lying areas could experience flash flooding. And up north, a mix between sun and showers must have been a great Friday. At sea, southeast winds 15 to 20 knots, moderate to rough seas. Now turning to the tides, low tide at 11.05 p.m. with high tide at 5.20 p.m. Sunrise at 6.11. For tomorrow, showers will be around. So if you're going to watch the Mari 7s happening at the grounds, please take your umbrellas along. Tomorrow's stamps, all centers will be cool in the lower 30 degrees. And looking further on to Sunday, it looks like a wet weekend. So take good rest so you're ready to tackle another upcoming week. That's all the weather news from my end. Have a wonderful weekend. It's back to Edwin. Thank you, Angie. In Fiji and Pulse, we ask, do you think Fiji can host an international sevens competition given the success of the Mara Sevens? I think it's a good idea, but we'll have to be prepared for it too. Having a tournament in Fiji will not only be affordable, but will help our economy as well. It will be great to have it here, because it will create more job opportunities. And on the plus side, Fijians will be able to afford it too. Hosting an international sevens tournament would be great. We wouldn't have to pay airfare to go watch it. And in the world of the weird and the wonderful, Harry Potter's wand, Batman's cowl and Stormtrooper helmets are up for grabs at Munich Auction. Recapping our main stories, Fiji committed to USP, says Mbaini Morama, Fijians can't fly home from PNG and no medicine shortage. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station Gold FM to our poll question. This week we are asking, do you know what a pyramid scheme is? Visit our FBC News website to answer. And on to our shot of the day. We end the week with another beautiful shot from Yasawa Irara sent by Suliasi Ravai Rokumulo. You can send us newsworthy pictures and videos, email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via our various social media accounts including Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. That's your news this evening. I'll see you again on Monday. Until then, stay safe. Mudemanda. Today FM rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM.